Welcome to Talking with the Experts. This is where we discuss great ideas to take your business to the next level. How do we know these ideas work? Well, it's because we're talking with business owners who are using these ideas. Business owners who have years of experience and expertise. All things business by business owners for business owners. And now, here is your host, Rose Davidson. Hi, I'm Rose Davidson from Talking with the Experts. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Global Glamping Charities for their valued support. Global Glamping Charities, solving homelessness in all its forms. Reach out to them at globalglamping.org. Talking with the experts. In episode 438, Stephanie Majika discusses why writing and publishing a book can help increase your visibility, credibility and market rate. I think there's a place for every kind of book in the world. I might not agree with it, but I am all about freedom of press and freedom of speech, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, as far as the practicalities of it, I I don't think that there's like a genre that's like, you know, not good. I will say that the people have gotten to some of the results that you mentioned. They generally did something that was like across a hybrid between self-help and business. Uh, because you know they got their personal stories in there a lot more and I think people especially nowadays want to get to know people more than businesses and when you write talking with the experts hello and welcome to talking with the experts I'm your host Rose Davidson from rosedavidson.com Talking with the experts is about all things business, by business owners, for business owners. You can find it on all good podcasting, streaming platforms and on YouTube. And I'd like to ask you this question. Have you ever thought about writing a book? Well, businesses have a harder time standing out in the crowd nowadays, especially if it's a service-based business. Writing and publishing a book has helped Uh, Many people increase their visibility, credibility, market reach and profitability. And my next guest, Stephanie Mojica, is going to explain to us um, how we can go about doing that um, to get more reach and, um, you know, become famous. So Stephanie has um, drawn uh, on her 17-year tenure as a journalist with publications such as USA Today the Philadelphia Inquirer, the San Francisco Chronicle and the Virginian Pilot, among many others. Stephanie's greatest passion is working with entrepreneurs, coaches and licensed professionals such as attorneys and psychologists to craft their stories into books that draw clients to them. She has coached dozens of authors through the book writing process, including Andrew Wilkinson from uh, the business, sorry, The Blessings of My Storms, Zia Po um, Eubanks, uh, Becoming Zia, A Tale of Transformation and Becoming You, Interactive Workbook, and Dion Monsato, um, 100 and Ways to Live Life in Joy. Stephanie has written and published romance novels under several pseudonyms and ghostwritten several non-fiction books in her own name. She has published one how one writer shifted from um, settling for $12 an hour to prospering to over $90 an hour and shorter books such as quick answers to frequently asked credit questions. Welcome, Stephanie. Thank you so much for being with me today. And I really look forward to hearing more about your journey into authorship. Me too. And it's an honor to be here. I'm glad to share my expertise with your audience. Thank you. And it's yes, I said, it's a very great pleasure to have you. Stephanie, how did you Uh, get so passionate about writing books well I've been a writer my my entire life I was writing when I was eight years old grew up around writers my late grandmother was a published author although she didn't publish her books till later in life so I've just always been around writing been very much into reading knew I wanted to either be a journalist or an attorney when I was growing up uh, nowadays in the writing side of my business, I've kind of combined them both. I do a lot of writing for attorneys and 
legal organizations at that side of my business. Um, so it's just, I was a newspaper journalist. I helped some of my um, professors in college edit their books. So then I was teaching writing. It just kind of evolved from there. Yeah. So what what are the benefits of a business owner writing, um, especially a service based business, uh, writing a book? I mean, I could go on for a year about that. I won't, obviously, and I'm going to probably write a book about that as well. But I mean, basically, especially with the pandemic, it's very hard to stay out as a service provider. You know, it doesn't matter what education you have, what expertise you have. There's a lot of noise on the Internet. And I see so many service providers and other business owners, you know, just posting on Facebook, posting on Facebook, posting on Facebook, and they think that's going to help their business. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you it does not because I have gotten clients from Facebook, but especially recently with the algorithm changing and them trying to go more towards the ad space model, it's very hard. Also, it's really hard to suss out people's credibility on social media. There are some people, I'm just going to be honest, because that's just how I am, that are better at sales than at what they do. And people have been burned by that, especially with writers and coaches. People have been outright lied to. So when you write a book and you publish it, it sets you apart because you're showing A, you know what you're doing, because it's very hard to fake your way through an entire book. I mean, it just is. So, you know, obviously you want to give them tips about how to do what you do, but, you know, a lot of times people aren't going to try it themselves. They're going to come to you. Another thing is it shows that, and please don't think I'm knocking career changers because I'm not, but it shows that you're in your game for the long run. There's a lot of people, especially during the pandemic, that change jobs overnight. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it does call everyone's expertise into question. So you show that you're in it for the long haul. And then it's it's something that a lot of people just are never going to do. I think there's a statistic that 98% of people who want to write a book do not do it. So it's just, it really sets you apart. You know, if you're trying to get live speaking events, I know a lot of people in the coaching consulting industry do this. You know, it's easier if they have something at the back of their room to sign and sell. I've seen people make $4,000 in one night doing that. So it's just, and it also shows the conference organizers that you're serious about what you're doing. Yeah, that's very good points there, Stephanie. I I agree with them. And um, I think that they do show your expertise and uh, they do show that you uh, dedicated to what you're doing. However, how does one get started? I mean, what are the first steps that people need to do to be able to write this book? Because not all of us are authors. Exactly. And, you know, a lot of the people I work with are non-writers. They didn't go to school for writing. You know, they don't consider themselves writers. Some of them haven't even written blog posts because people overcomplicate it, I think. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's the easiest thing in the world to do. It's not. But if you have the right support and right education, it can be done. So the first thing to do, and I teach this, you know, whether I'm leading a group uh, or, you know, one-on-one, is to make a decision that you're going to write a book. I recently had to do that, make a decision to write another book because I've been so busy helping other people with their books. I haven't had time for my own writing. So I made a decision that I was going to write a book, you know, around the other side of my business, writing for attorneys. I made a decision and I said I was going to get it done by the end of this year. And, you know, I used, I always practice what I teach. I use the materials I give to my clients to plan my outline, plan my schedule, (laughs) et cetera, et cetera. So making that decision, I think is really important. And I think sometimes people mistake that for pressure and it doesn't have to be. A lot of people come to me, they're doing like a memoir business uh, hybrid where they're talking about a personal experience as well as talk about their business. I find that those clients, especially the women and the non-binary folks that are interested in that, they do like, they want to get it out of them quickly. So they're more apt to do it in like a three month program, a six month program. But I've had people take a year to write it. There's some people who I've talked to, I didn't work with them, but I've talked to, they took two years to write it, 10 years to write it. I just think it's important to make that, you know, decision and set that deadline. 
So that's yeah. the first step. Yeah, and what and, and then following that, you know, it's obviously t- making the decision. But you know, what other steps are there after that? I mean, you've got to find a publisher and an editor and all sorts of other things. Well, a lot of people I work with are self-publishing nowadays because there's a lot of advantages to that as a business owner. And also you're going to have quicker time to market. One of the disadvantages is obviously you're going to have to invest in things like an editor, which is something I also do. But, you know, you know you're know, you going to have to invest in an editor, a book cover designer. But, you know, with a publisher, I've had people come to me really unhappy because they had a publishing contract, the publisher published a book, and then they didn't really do anything to promote it. So there's like this mistaken idea that if you go with a publisher, they're going to promote your book like crazy and you're going to sell a million copies. And unless you're already somebody that sells a million copies, I know it's oxymoron. They're not going to devote this kind of resource to you. They There was one publishing contract that somebody recently sent me and they were saying that the person needed to have at least 15,000 Instagram followers so it's like they want you having a big following already to get the publishing contract and then they have full control over what goes in your book they also have full control to how long the book will be published uh, like I said a person can be really unhappy recently because their book had been put out of print when the publisher thinks that they're not going to make any money off it anymore, they'll put a uh, print. The problem is nine times out of 10, you signed a contract said they own the rights to the book. So mm-hmm. you can't republish it yourself without some legal wrangling, which the person was able to get an attorney. I have a law degree, but I'm not a practicing attorney. So the person was able to go get an attorney on my recommendation and get the rights back to their book. So it's like you're literally signing your rights away when you go yeah. with a publisher. Yeah, I just recently spoke. My Actually, my guest before you is a, a book publisher, and he said the same. And, and that was quite shocking to me that, um, you know, if you go to a publisher that you they, well, they just – take over the rights of your of your work and I think do that's uh, not really that's not really right you know it's not theirs to have right and that's you know why I think the model has become less popular than before I mean there's some people it's their dream to be published by a publisher and there's nothing wrong with that but for the things we're talking about where you have a story you really want to get out there that's personal or you're trying to get it out for your business or both it's just you're going to have so much more control over it and you're going to make more money per book sold. You know, there's just so many advantages of self-publishing, but the upfront investment kind of throws some people off because you do have to invest in the editor and the cover design at a minimum yourself. Yeah. And, and are these things expensive? It depends on how long your book is. Like if I've had people publish like, you know, short books for, you know, a thousand dollars you know can get up or into several thousand dollars or more if you're printing like a really long book but you know there's just so many advantages it's like, like any kind of marketing you have to make some sort of investment of either time or financial resources yeah and is it advisable to um um you know what platforms i guess would would you publish your, your would you self publish I would say all but one of my clients that actually it's more like well over a hundred at this point uh, have used Amazon. You can have it like print on demand, which means you don't pay to print the books. Basically Amazon pays to print it when they, when a person orders it and then you get like a large percentage of what's left. You can also do the digital Kindle. I generally recommend people do both unless they have a really, really short book that it's not going to be able to be printed. So uh, some people use Ingram Spark. I'm not as familiar with that one. I think only one person I've worked with has used that. But that, you know, I don't think there's, I think Amazon is obviously a huge advantage, but this person was just very, very morally opposed to Amazon because of the founder. Yeah. So, and she, and she still did well. She She had a following already. But Amazon generally, despite what you may think of, of the person behind it, is the way to go. Yeah, I, I I agree. I think um, it's you know a search engine, and if you want to be found, you, you know Amazon will have you have you back in that regard. So, 
Yeah. Um, I guess um, genres are better for business books, you know, is there some genres that or some mm, niches that shouldn't be written about that don't make good books? That's a great question. I think it depends on your your, your morality, your moral code, et cetera. I think there's a place for every kind of book in the world. I might not agree with it, but I am all about freedom of press and freedom of speech, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, as far as the practicalities of it, I I don't think that there's like a genre that's like, you know, not good. I will say that the people have gotten to some of the results that you mentioned. They generally did something that was like across a hybrid between self-help and business. Uh, because you know they got their personal stories in there a lot more and I think people especially nowadays want to get to know people more than businesses and when you write a book do is it advisable to put a call to action (laughs) at the end (laughs) yes absolutely and the way I teach the people I work with is to like mention it throughout the book not in a spammy way but like for example there was somebody earlier who you know, I was working with her on her book and she like mentioned, you know, this about partway through the book, the, the importance of talking to somebody such as herself. But then, you know, about this particular issue as a spiritual issue. So you can mention it, you know, in the book, you don't have to say, call me right now, but you can say in my work doing such and such, you know, I've solved this problem for so and so. So I think it's important to put your formal call to action at the end. And usually I recommend people have them, you know, download a free gift that goes along with their book or, you know, you know, I don't necessarily recommend putting a link to book a free consultation with you because you could get hundreds or thousands of requests, (laughs) but just, you know, some way for people to at least get on your email list to get into your world beyond that book. Yeah. What about QR codes? QR codes are very interesting. I've only had two clients that have worked with those. So, but I think they're becoming more popular. I look forward to seeing more uh, of that. I think, especially with Kindle, you know, that's going to be, you know, more important as time goes on. Mm, yeah, I've um, noticed a few books that have got QR codes in them. And I think, yeah, you you know, you can watch a video or download a document or, or whatever. And I think it's um, a really neat way of, of marketing. Right. Yeah, one of the clients I work with is using QR codes. And what she's doing is uh, it's more of a children's like book, uh, but it's also marketing to their parents because they're reading the book to the the mm. child but you know you're basically gonna scan a qr code and it's gonna go she's basically creating a podcast around this book as well and it's gonna go to a specific episode of this podcast oh interesting yeah i was going to do um videos in mine um rather than qr code um is that a, a thing or is it you know not advisable to put video like videos in there or I don't know if that's technically possible. Um, I'm sure it probably is. I mean, you can click a link or something, but I don't know if you can embed. I don't do that tech side of it. Usually I mm. send that to somebody else. I just do like coaching and editing. And then like if somebody needs a book description written, et cetera, et cetera. But um, that's a good question. I think people are more partial to video nowadays. I just don't know the technicalities of including Mm -hmm. that in your book and i don't know amazon's rules around it at the moment because their rules are always regularly changing yeah okay yeah it was just an interesting uh, idea that i had that um you know they could watch a video a bit like a training you know they'd read a bit of the book and then or or watch a video first and then do the you know read the book or whatever but yeah i just thought it was um yeah i might um might explore that a bit more and, and see how that goes Stephanie, um, you know, some other things that people uh, talk about is, is graphics and charts and and um, images and, and all sorts of other things. Do you advise those in a, say, a business book or even a, um, or even a personal storybook? Actually, that's very interesting you mentioned that. Just the other day I finished editing a book for a psychologist. I also coached her through writing her book, and she has graphics and figures in it. I think it can add to it 
depending on what you're doing. Obviously, um, if you're doing Kindle, you're going to have to be more careful that they're formatted properly. And that's where a great graphic designer who designed your cover can can help. But I think it is important. You know, if you're writing a memoir, you know, like back in the old days, you know, when we had more printed books, there was usually a center section where you had pictures and things mm -hmm. like that. So I think, you know, in a memoir, you could put some appropriate pictures. So I think it's good to put some pictures in there. You just don't want to be too over the top, especially if you're like having a book printed, because then that could also add to like the cost of printing the book. So I think it's just a personal decision for everybody. But I think a good mix is is important. Mm, yeah, I think so, too. I, I like I like pictures in books because they. Um, as long as they're describing yeah. or or relevant to the to the text, I think just don't shove a picture in there for the sake of shoving a picture in there. <laughs> right, right. People used to do that a lot in the nineteen eighties. Just you know, shove pictures in there. So yeah. I would just yeah. make sure it's you know related to what you're talking about. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, Stephanie, what other tips would you give a a new person who was you know thinking about writing a book? I would definitely put the writing time on your schedule. I have to do that myself. All my clients do that as well, usually with me on the phone, because if it's not on the calendar, it just does not get done. Uh, I have found that for myself and so many people I've worked with. So even if you can spare 30 minutes a week, you'll be surprised how it can get done 30 minutes. So definitely schedule that writing time on your calendar you also, um, some people are starting to dictate their books because they're better verbal storytellers. That they, they don't want to sit behind a computer and type. That just sounds like a nightmare to them. And we have so much text, you know, audio to text technology that there's things you could do. So I would just, you know, schedule that time to write or speak. And just, and some people have done a mix of both. Some people have turned podcast episodes into part of or all of their book. Some people who are speakers have done the same. So I would definitely take a look at whatever material you have at this time for your business and what you have the rights to, because obviously with some speaking events, you don't have the rights to, you know, reshare it. So always mm. check that. But, you know, see what you have. And then just, like I said, schedule that time. Make it important on your calendar. Let your family members, colleagues know that this is your time. Mm. And I think those are, those are great places to start. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I, I'd thought about putting all my podcast episodes into a book. I think it would be quite interesting. <laughs> yes, it's definitely interesting. And, you know, with a good editor, you know, you can get those editor where, you know, yes, people are going to know that it was like an interview, but it can be like edited in a way where it's like each one is its own story. Mm. Yeah, no, yeah, I, I've had that thought too. I mean, I've got lots of thoughts, but never the uh, motivation mm -hmm. to get out there and actually do it. I think it, I don't just, it's, I think it's just the fear of, of um, not getting it right or something. I don't know. But there's, yeah, right, there's, exactly. Yeah, it's to, there is a fear behind writing a book or even starting to write a book. So there is. I talk to a lot of people that want to do it, but they're like scared. And they're not really scared to do it for themselves. They're scared about what other people think. There was one lady that really, 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 really wants to write a book, but she's like really scared of how her daughter and husband are going to react. So because it's kind of all personal stories. And obviously there's some things I'm not choosing to write this time, you know, for similar reasons. So I think fear is what stops a lot of people. Mm. Yeah, especially if they're writing a non-fiction story, it'd be um, it would be difficult, I think, to not uh -huh. up, upset other people if it's you know personal a personal story that you know right affects others. Stephanie, where can people find you if they want to work with you or they want to learn more about what you offer? So I have a free ebook called Three Things You Must Know Before Writing Your Book that you can go download. It's at gettheirattentionnow.com forward slash book. That's gettheirattentionnow.com forward slash book. There's also, you'll see other things on that website. There's a, a button where you can apply for a complimentary discovery session. I don't ever pressure people, but, you know, we just get to know each other. 
and the side of working together is a great fit. And that's, you can also find me on LinkedIn, Facebook, not really that active on Instagram anymore, but I do have a lot of old posts up where you can learn more about the process of writing a book. And I have, I've been published on entrepreneur.com. So I'm pretty easy to find and would love to hear from people. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing all that really great information, Stephanie. If you could offer some advice to a, a potential author, what would that be? I would say if it's something that's like, you know, not leaving your mind, it's not leaving your mind for a reason. I would just, you know, encourage you. Most of my clients have been to therapy and coaching I would or have a minister. I would just encourage you to talk to somebody about what's holding you back because, you know, we only have a limited number of time here on this earth and we don't know when that time is going to be up. And I'm not, I'm not trying to sound dramatic, but it's just a fact. And it's like, I would just hate to see somebody who really wanted to write a book, not do it. Mm -hmm. Good advice. Good advice. Because uh, yeah, you just never know what's going to happen the next minute. Do you? No. <laughs> Stephanie, thank you so much for joining me today thank and you. being my guest. And um, it's been an absolute pleasure meeting you. And I look forward to talking to you again soon. Me too. Let's keep in touch. <laughs> Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. You've been listening to Talking with the Experts, hosted by Rose Davidson. Make sure you have a look at our back catalogue over at talkingwiththeexperts.com. And be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss out on any episode. We look forward to your company next time. Talking with the experts.